how's it going? It's Vasco from the Angular University and in this lesson we are going to learn how to build our own custom Angular 2 directive. It's coming right up. So you might have noticed while coding in plain HTML that there are certain attributes that we add to elements that add or remove existing functionality to those elements, such as for example the required attribute that marks an input field as mandatory in a form. In this lesson we are going to learn how to build such a custom directive, again extending the standard functionality of plain HTML with our own custom functionality. This is what Angular allows us to do. The custom attribute directive that we are about to create is the collapse on click directive. Whenever we apply it to an element on that page, that element, once it's clicked, will disappear from the screen. So this is just an example and the directive can be applied to any element on the page, including to Angular 2 components. A directive in Angular is simply a plain JavaScript class annotated with the at directive decorator. In there we are going to pass it a selector and notice the square brackets. This means that the directive should be applied to any HTML element on the page that has a collapse on click attribute. It is a best practice in the case of attribute directives to always use attribute selectors instead of, for example, element selectors like we do so for the case of components. Please be sure to check the end of this section for the exercise where we are going to present an implementation of Collapsible that uses more features. Right now we are simply going to define a CSS selector that says the following Any collapsible section inside the collapsed element should not be displayed on the screen, so display none. Be sure to check the section on ngif. So this directive will work in the following way. We need to detect clicks on the element on which the directive is applied to. And that is known as its host element, the directive's host element. In this case, it's this div with the CSS classes of card and card strong. Next, what we want to do is, whenever that click occurs, we want to add or remove a collapsed class to the host element, and that will trigger the appearance or disappearance of the collapsible panel. Let's see how to do this. Let's first create a isCollapsed private variable in the collapse on clicks directive. And what we're going to do is whenever a click event occurs in the host element, so we are going to use the at host listener decorator to detect events in the host element. Whenever a click occurs, we are going to toggle the value of the private variable is collapsed, which has a default initial value of false. What we want to do now is add the collapsed CSS class to the host element depending on the value of the isCollapsed private variable. For that we are going to use the host binding decorator. The host binding decorator allows us to write to properties of the host element. So in this case what we want to do is we want to set the property class.collapsed in case that the property is collapsed of the directive is set to true. So let's now see our first custom directive in action for the first time. If we now inspect the HTML, we can see that, for example, when we click on the this page section is collapsible text, whenever we click on it, the CSS class collapsed is either added or removed from the host element where the directive was applied. As we can see, directives have the potential of giving us more reusable functionality compared to components, any functionality that we add in a directive, we can add potentially to any component. But directives are really not that different from components. Let's have a look why in the next section. 